Hi, all of our famous fans. Welcome back to yet another episode of our series. After a short break, we are now back on schedule. Energized to cover the industry's hottest topics with our thoughts, opinions, and theories. So stay tuned for yet another episode every Monday morning. It's easy to still think of Square as just another payments company. In reality, Square has been slowly edging towards bank-like features. A transition that will be accelerated by its new whopping 29 billion US dollar acquisition of Afterpay. It is certainly worth noting that Square finally got a conditional approval for a banking license. Square's all stock deal fused the already flourishing and accelerating buy now pay later market. In essence, Square will now compete with dominant players such as Klarna and giant firms like Apple, PayPal, and Visa that have been drawn more recently to the market. Good morning, everyone. This is Merrick for Payment Jeans, and today it's all about payments. So, yes, 29 billion US dollar for a buy now pay later platform is an extremely high price. But it turns out that this deal is not just about jumping on a buy now pay later bandwagon after all. And this video will tell you why. Let's start by stating the obvious. Buy now pay later is taking the fintech world by a storm. There's not a day that goes by without us seeing buy now pay later in the headlines, and it has only been accelerating in 2021. The idea of incorporating a buy now pay later service into Square services is appealing. But did Square really need to spend 29 billion US dollars to deploy buy now pay later into their offerings? Well, we know that Square isn't really making a dent in its liquidity, since it's an all stock deal. What the deal is really about is bringing Afterpay's merchant relationships into Square's seller ecosystem and converting Afterpay's existing customer base into Square's Cash App users. From our perspective, the first reason behind this move is that Square will indirectly gain access to Afterpay's 16 million user database, enabling them to use level 3 consumer data for future offerings. On top of that, research revealed that only 13% of Square's Cash App users earn more than 100k a year. In contrast, 31% of Buy Now Pay Later users who are predominantly Gen Zens and Millennials have high incomes. Square most likely needs those higher income consumers in order to keep attracting new merchants to the platform. Another plausible theory is that Square plans on following Klarna's footsteps in issuing either virtual or physical credit cards to its consumers, further playing into their moves resembling a bank-like proposition. Regardless of the main reason behind this acquisition, it is clear that this move is highly strategic and well-timed, especially coming at a time where buy now pay later popularity is going through the roof. Best of luck to Square and how this acquisition will leave a footprint in the industry in the coming years. Share your two cents down in the comments below. Do you think that 29 billion US dollars is a fair price for this deal? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the matter. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe for weekly new videos. For now, I'd like to thank you all again for watching and looking forward to see you all again next week. Cheers, bye bye!